You ready? And let's go. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to another live Q&A. It is the last day in April, which means we are one third done with 2018, which is like pff, mind blowing. Uh, it is, pff, that is a big deal, I suppose. I'm here to take your questions. I'll be taking your questions on both YouTube and Twitch. So if you have questions on either one of those, I will answer your questions as best as I can. As always, as I say on these, I don't answer all the questions. I just answer some of them. Asking your questions multiple times does not ins ensures probably that you will not get an answer, actually. Uh, I had a good weekend. Tabletop day. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing games there. I only, uh, I promised the guys there I would only bring in games that I knew how to play. So I brought in a ton of my favorite games. And I ended up spending most of tabletop day not playing games, just going around teaching games. I taught Altiplano several times, and um, I played Kemet. I taught that to Melody. She hadn't played that before, so I played Kemet. I taught to three, two new guys, and they're like, hey, we're looking for gaming. And the guy's like, you got access and allies? I was like, no. Shogun? I was like, no. You got anything like that? I was like, well, Kemet's kind of like that. And they were, both these guys were very pleased with Kemet when we played it. Um, we also, I played Project the Lead. I played um, The Adventurers, so that was fun. You know, there's a lot of games that we played. Uh, Cosmic Encounter I taught. I taught um, uh, just, man, I was just all over the place teaching games, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, also, we saw Avengers Infinity War. I am not going to spoil anything here, but I will say it is probably my favorite movie ever. Like, not just of Marvel Universe, but ever. I had high expectations for this movie, and the movie met and in some spots even exceeded them. I've seen it twice already. Very, very pleased with it. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, lots of fun. I know not everyone liked it, but, you know, it is what it is. So, okay, so let's see here. No questions on Twitch right now. Well, let's go to YouTube then. I love your turtle hat. Did you buy it at the zoo? I, I did not buy it at the zoo. I bought it, uh, uh, it was a Kickstarter actually. A guy did a turtle hat and I was like, why not? I uh, thought it was a cool idea. He said everywhere he goes, it makes people smile. And I'll tell you what, of all my hats, it definitely gets the most compliments. It, gets, it just makes people smile. People like the turtle hat. Uh, and you know, it's just one of those things. When I wear hats like that, I think, why don't more people do things like this? Everyone's like, I love your hat. Then why don't you wear it? Oh, I could never do that. You know what? You could do that. You really could. And if there's someone who's like, look at your hat, then do you really want to hang out with that person anyway, right? So, I don't know. I love the hat. Um, let's see here. I'm going to have to move this window here so I can see both windows, although I'm not sure I need to see the Twitch window since there is literally nothing in the chat there. Not even anyone saying hi. All right, here we go. Um, how do you know whose turn it is to speak during the top tens? <laughs> I keep that in my mind. I, I have it memorized, who speaks when, and you don't see it, but I always say it before each clip and before we start recording, I'll say, all right, it's me, Sam Z, or whatever. I, I know the order. Um, I've messed up a couple times, but usually I got it down. I also, we've done some so many times now that it's, it's getting better. Um, have you started Rise of Queensdale yet? No, I haven't, although I've already recorded how to play it because I want to show it with the fresh board. So I set the whole thing up, looked at it, read the rules. I'm ready. I'm anxious. And there's a million other things we need to do, which is very saddening to me. So I'm going to get it played at some point. Um, let's see. Have I played Mythic Battles Pantheon? I haven't. Um, was there any, do I know anything about the price point on Detective? I don't. <laughs> there are some people in, street, in Twitch now. What game are you really looking forward to? It's introduction at Gen Con. I don't know, because I actually don't know which games are coming out at Gen Con at this point. I don't keep track of like when a game's coming out over the course of the year. So we'll do a preview for Gen Con at some point, but there is like seven conventions before then. I got Simon Con and, 
and uh, Geekway to the West and UK Games Expo and Origins and Dice Tower Con and yeah, there's just stuff going on in between. What's my current mix, favorite mix of expansions to mix with Race for the Galaxy? I usually just use the stuff from one through three, uh, the first three expansions, and um, without the war cards, I take them out because I think they're a waste of time. Uh, but I sometimes will also mix some pieces from all the expansions in because I don't care about that the game needs to be 100% balanced. For me, it's not that huge of a deal. I know it is for a lot of people, but it's not that huge with the, you know, the right sort of cards. And I just like playing the game really the base way. That's all. Um, let's see. If a game flies under the radar... People are asking me to guess how big the production budget for Avengers Infinity War was. I have no idea. Um, if a game flies under the radar in, late in the year, you don't have a chance to play it until halfway through the following year. Is it then disqualified from, from the Dice Tower Awards? Well, here's the deal. The, I don't vote in the Dice Tower Awards. I only voted to break a tie, and this year in the nominations, there was no ties, so I didn't vote at all. So it doesn't matter if it flew under my radar. So basically, you're saying if a game flew under everyone's radar, you know what? Tough luck. I, I'm sorry to be that blunt about it, but tough luck. If your game flies under everyone's radar, that's your fault as a publisher. you got to get that game out there. There's a gazillion games. Lots of these games are flying under people's radars. And a great game will rise above that. A great game will get a lot of buzz going about it, and it will go out. And, yeah, that's just the way it is. And maybe a game that should have won didn't get out to enough people. I don't feel bad about that. I don't lose one wink of sleep over that because there's a lot of games out there you got to get your games talked about if you watch top tens there's almost a pattern to the turns they speak oh yeah yeah it's pretty easy it is uh sam me z me z sam z sam me then it's z me sam me sam z sam z me and then sam me z me z sam Z Sam me, and then we roll off for number one. See? Easy. Um, best game that meets and beats Glory to Rome play? I don't know that I, uh, I'm not as, I like Glory to Rome a lot, but I don't, I'm not as huge a fan as other people. I don't know if there's a game that beats it in exactly how it plays. It's very unique. There's a few other games like Import Export, for example. Glory to Rome seems pretty good. I, I like the dinosaur one better a little bit because of the theme and it was easier, but um, let's see. Would you ever play base cyclades without Titans to change things up? Nope. I will always play with Titans in the future. Are you excited at all about Eclipse 2nd Edition? Yeah, sounds interesting. I'm, I'll be certainly willing to play it. I, again, I know this is weird for people, right? But I'm really not so much in this cult of the future. I'm really not. I know that games are coming out and there's excitement to these games coming out. Like even Seventh Continent. I love Seventh Continent. And I know that there's the expansion coming out, the airship one and stuff. I haven't gotten my copy of that yet. I don't know when it's going to come. I'm excited about it when it does come, but I can wait. You know, when it comes, it comes. Uh, that's kind of how I am. There's so many great games out there now that I don't sit around like swooning about ones that might come or might not come. That's really how it works. What's your opinion on companies using sub non-standard card sizes? I asked seeing the odd size of space-based cards. Oh, there's space-based right over there. I don't know, actually. Um, I, I, I don't care too much, really. I mean, if they're hard to shuffle, that's a pain. I know for some people it's a problem because of sleeving, but I don't sleeve, so that doesn't bother me as much. Smaller cards, eh. Um, but I just, when a card's shaped weirdly, it seems good at first until you have to shuffle, and then I'm like, ah, it's not so much fun to shuffle hexagonal cards, right? Um, I'm trying to get into Euro games. But I don't know which one to start with. Is Champions of Midgard a good one to start with? Sure, I love Champions of Midgard. What's a good old classic you've played recently? Well, what did I just say I played? Kemet. Does Kemet count as a classic yet? I don't know that I play classic old games. I just play whatever floats my boat, and I had fun playing that one. Can you make an in-depth video about why board gaming is good for people? 
oh, sure, yeah, I'm probably going to do that at some point. That's on my list of things to do. Um, but I want to finish my uh, Best of Designers series first, actually. Do people still donate to the Dice Tower beyond the Kickstarter drive at the beginning of the year? Sure, it happens. I mean, you could even, if you wanted to, subscribe to the Dice Tower here through YouTube. I don't think anyone has done it, but you could, you know, do it that way. Um, there's various ways you can send through PayPal and stuff. We don't push it because I don't want to talk about money all year round. Um, I just don't want to. I want to, you know, focus on content. Have you ever considered doing a top 10 trick-taking games? I think we already have. Me and Z at least did a video on that. I will be doing one of those in the future. We might even do it as a big top 10 between the three of us because we've all played a lot of trick-taking games. Are you going to have any new content for Board Game Breakfast? Well, we had a new segment that started today. Considering your Who Cares segment from Board Game Breakfast, my son didn't like Avengers Infinity War. Well, I guess, I, again, that comes out of Who Cares. If I... If someone doesn't like something I, I like, I, I guess, I don't know. You know, this, this happens in movies a lot, right? Like, if you tell someone you like Star Wars Episode One, they kind of look at you like, Here, there's something wrong with you. And it seems, I don't know, I just, there's that thing. Now, I'm going to talk in this upcoming week because there's been some, you know, we, we make joking comments about stuff like that in our top tens. And I think that's a little bit different when it's done as a joke type thing. But we'll talk about that uh, next board game breakfast. I agree with you, but Christian Peterson disagrees with both of us. He complained last year there are too many games that come out preventing great games from rising to the top. I don't think he said that exactly, actually. I, th I agree that there's probably too many games coming out, but great games still rise to the top. It keeps good games from getting looked at sometimes. There's so many good games. I was thinking about this. I was just playing one of the games I taught a lot at, at Tabletop Day was Exodus Fleet. I think it's a very good game. It's in my collection. I like it. But... No one's heard of it. It's gone already, you know, off the people's radar. And just because it was a good game, but didn't have that, you know, that made it go to the top. It is what it is. If I watch the full ad in your YouTube videos, you guys get more money versus if I skip the ad. I have no idea. The way YouTube does income is beyond me. I mean, I do think it's hilarious when we get the income thing and it'll be like, this video earned you 0 0.000003 cents. I'm like, huh. Cool. <laughs> um, what's the algorithm for order in top 10? You make it sound like it was chosen at random. It wasn't chosen at random. It was chosen so that everyone goes first, middle, and last about equally. I'm planning our family dinner menu for the next two weeks. What's your favorite meal? My favorite meal is taco salad. I don't know why. I just love it. Although Bude Chige is very close, which is why every Monday we have Bude Chige or Taco Salad. I think tonight is Bude Chige because Taco Salad was last week. But sometimes we don't get Bude Chige because kimchi is more expensive than it was in Korea for sure. So we don't eat that all the time. What are fun, cheaper things to do in Orlando? Well, there's not a lot cheap to do there, but there are some things. The Crayola experience is pretty good. Well, again, that's for kids, though, I, you know, if you don't have kids. Um, this, you can get some of the dinner theaters for a more inexpensive price. You don't have to have maybe the best seats for them. Though. Those are pretty fun. Uh, I would, um, you can walk around Disney Springs and see a lot of fun stuff. You don't have to pay anything to do that. You can, I mean, there are all the restaurants and stuff there, but that's what I would do on a budget. What was my favorite 80s cartoon? Probably G.I. Joe. I mean, I know that it's hokey. I've go, gone back and watched them. I'm like, oh, man. But I liked G.I. Joe. I like G.I. Joe, Voltron, Mask, um, Transformers, um, The Seven Cities of Gold. Um, those are the ones I think I like the most. Ghostbusters. Both versions. The original Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters. Um... Best con for a newbie, Dice Tower Con. And there's still tickets left. Can we have a list of everyone who was made into a dice guy? Uh, I don't know. 
Probably not right now because the the artist is still working on several people. Oh yeah, someone here said best con for a newbie is a local con if you have one. I agree, but other than that, dice tower con for sure. Um, is Gen Con getting too big? Probably, um, but I don't think it's getting bigger because it's selling out every year now, right? So. Um, is there a best way to enjoy Gen Con for newbies? I might make a video based on that sometime, but that, that video almost seems like it'd be useful to make at Gen Con for the following year. Is it true that board games outsell video games? No, that is not true. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was dead air there for a moment. I was reading some of these questions. Uh... Will there ever be a live play of me, Melody, and Jason? Yeah, we might do that. I don't think we've ever done those three together, right? Have we, like, has it showed up in a marathon? It might not, but we, actually, the three of us play together a lot. Um, so, that just haven't done it live. I used to sit in the middle to do top tens. Now I'm at an offset angle to the side. Um, yeah, I just moved, no worries. Nothing at all, we just moved. Will there be a top 10 for apocalyptic games? Do you mean post-apocalyptic? I don't know how many apocalyptic games there are. Probably, I mean, you, I think you mean post-apocalyptic. I don't know if there's enough for us to all three do that. It's not on the, the quick thing. At what age do you think dexterity games are no longer considered educational for kids? I don't really understand that question. Tom, I'm bringing taco pies to Origins. Uh, okay. That doesn't sound good. It's Wis it's in Wisconsin, but do you want a key lime taco pie? That sounds horrifically bad. Maybe you should explain more. Is taco there a metaphor? Or is the pie in a taco shell, like the Choco Tacos that Taco Bell used to sell? Um, is Kickstarter taking over introducing and publishing games? Uh, la, 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 yep. Kind of, sort of. It definitely is a way of marketing for sure. I don't know if it's taking over it because the convention still released a lot of games at them. You recently re-reviewed Oh My Goods following the rules being updated. Are there any other games you would like to re-review either because of rule changes or your opinion on it has changed? Probably not. I mean, it will happen occasionally. I won't say it won't, but I'm going to just say as a general principle, I don't do that. Um, I did it with All oh My Goods because it just came up. I got some expansions for All oh My Goods that I wanted to try out. I heard the new rules changed a lot. And Alexander Pfister is such a well-known designer that I was like, how could he have had a game that failed so much for me? And so I gave it another try. But that is a very rare thing that I will do. First impressions are usually all you're going to get here, unfortunately. Um... You said you're reading Mistborn. How far have you gotten the book enjoying it? Well, actually, I have finished the entire series up to this point. So there's the original trilogy. I read all three of those. And then the four after that, the Wayne and Wax, or Wax and Wayne series, I guess they're called, series. There's four of those. And there's a fifth one coming. And that one's coming this year and next year, which I always hate because now I got to the end and I have to wait. But this whole series is my favorite fantasy series I've ever read. Ever. Especially the Wax and Wayne ones. I like the first ones. They're great. They're grandiose. They're epic. They're cool. Great characters. But the four main characters from the new series, the both the, the two male and the two female leads. I, there's other characters, but there's four main leads. I really like them. And that was with them introducing one of them, um, the main character, this is not really a spoiler, but the main character is the Wax, or Waxalillion uh, is his full name. He is doing an arranged marriage because he runs his house, and so he meets this woman, and she is the most off-putting person, and they do it deliberately, right? But as the series goes on, they really bring out her character, and they don't really, like, she doesn't change completely, but you realize why she acts the way she is, and you start to enjoy a lot of her things. Great, great character. I really like her, and Wayne is just Wayne is possibly one of my favorite characters from any book ever. He's just so interesting, so nuanced, and 
very funny, but but with some tragedy, you know, around the corners and stuff. And so I just, it's, it's a great, great series, and I really like it. I'm looking forward to the next book, but I kind of put it out of my mind, and now I need another series to read. So I'm thinking about reading Brandon Sanderson's other series, and I don't know what I'll do after that. I'll pop on to something else, but I'm, right now, as of this moment, I don't have a book to read. I, I read some short stories last night by George R. R. Martin, and they were pretty horrific, so I think I'm done with that for a while. <laughs> That man, that man's a, that man does not like people. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever, I'm sure he's written some things that have positive endings, but ooh, ooh, okay, I need something more positive. I, uh, anyway, uh, let's see. How does the new Snakes and Lattes rank amongst all the board game cafes you experienced? The fact is, is that all three of the Snakes and Lattes cafes, I think, are the, th like, if I was ranking all the board game cafes I've ever been to, and there's a lot of good ones, and this is not saying anything bad against all the rest of them, but the three snakes and lattes are the three best I've been to. Period. They're just that good. Um, are you going to be visiting Cool Stuff Maitland? Not for a while. I mean, I might get up there at some point, but not for a while. If you have a game you want to sell under license, how much percentage do designers ask for? Uh, designers usually get somewhere between 5 and 10% of a game. It depends on how well-known you are, what the company is willing to give you. They might do less, they might do more, they might, you know, just buy the game from you. There's all kinds of different deals out there. I can't tell you exactly what you'll get. I think better off you get the contract from the publisher, and then you might ask a few people, other people in the business, say, is, am I getting a decent deal here? Definitely, if you have a lawyer, have the lawyer look over it, or at least have someone else in the gaming industry look over it, because... You know, when I first was getting into this business, I was like, oh, I'm just happy to work with anybody. I'm just happy to have a contract. And I really, in my gaming career, have signed some pretty bad contracts. And the in retrospect, they kind of like, oh. Now, I mean, fortunately, nothing. I've never signed a dice tower away or anything like that, right? But there's been a lot of things I'm like, oh, well, okay. Well, life is what it is. But I, I now have my contracts looked at to make sure that they are okay. Dear Vassal, Mr. Vassal, can you tell us anything about Days of Wonders next release? No, but as soon as they announce it, I'll talk about it. Would you bring Thunder Alley Formula D or automobiles introduce racing to a board game group? Depends on the group, right? They're three very different games. Uh, probably if I didn't know though, it'd be Formula D. Was there anything again about Forbidden Skies? There was not. Not that I saw. Game Right is not talking about that yet, except that it's there. The pie isn't a taco shell, but it's a pastry-like shell. Ah. Well, then that's better, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds better. Tom, we couldn't find Chicken Chop Chop at Dice Tower Con last year. Is that just a Miami area thing? It might be a Miami area thing. It's definitely a, a Cuban style dish, I think. So, like, there's one right by my house. I mean, there's like, you can get that all over the place. You can get it in in Orlando if they have any polio tropicals there, which they might. You you can probably get it there, but I don't know Orlando that well. I feel like if you're looking for a kind of food, it's in Orlando somewhere because Orlando has that many restaurants. But I don't know much more. Is there anything from Twilight Imperium 3 that I feel is missing in Twilight Imperium 4? Yeah, I like the upgrading the planet stuff. I like some, some of the stuff from the expansions is missing, but not a lot. Do you ever go back to the old deck building games you like? Oh, sure. In fact, this past Saturday when I took games, I brought Dominion. Um, and then it didn't get played, but it almost got played. It, I brought it to the table. And I said, all right, now, you know what? Let's play Project Elite. <laughs> Project Elite is so much fun. Try Way of the Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Okay. That's, that, that, that is one I'm, I'm considering, so. Let's see here. Have you read the Dark Tower series? I have not, actually. So maybe that series is good. Z read it. He said it, it's, it's, it's hit or miss is what he told me about it. 
Um, oh, now people are giving me all kinds of books to read. Children of Time. Um, okay, I haven't read that. Do I have a favorite James Bond movie? Um, no, maybe, maybe the one uh, where he fights the computer nerd and the Russians, where he fights his own, like he, I think he fights 006 in it, but I don't remember what that one's called. It was the first one with Pierce Brosnan, maybe? Or the second one with Pierce Brosnan? I don't know. But um, I'm, the James Bonds are interesting. They're, they're good. Nowadays, they're, they're not as James Bondy for me. They're just like any other spy thriller. Um, but James Bonds have not aged well for me. You know, I don't watch them with my kids because I don't really think James Bond is like a great role model. So I haven't watched a James Bond movie in a while. Um... After watching Infinity War, what's your opinion of Thanos, Thanos rising? I, I don't think that my watching the movie changed my opinion on it. Uh, it changed my opinion on maybe some of the cards and my thoughts on some of those cards, but that's, that's pretty much it. I still like the game. Um, will you have time to come and visit uh, Board Game Cafe and the Pieces Board Game Cafe and Bar in St. Louis when you're at St. Louis for Geekway to the West? No. Uh, whenever I'm brought into a convention, I try to give my full attention to that convention, especially if I'm there for a short time. So, like, I'm coming in and I'm only at the Geekway to the West. I think I'm coming in Wednesday night, so I'm there Thursday, Friday, and I'm flying back out Saturday. So I'm there all day Thursday, Friday, and part of Saturday. And that feels like that's I should be there for most of that. With all these best of designer videos, is there one designer you found appeals to you to the most, to you the most, or really surprised you when researching them? Uh, no, I, I have a pretty good grasp on what designers do, so I'm pretty much know which ones I like a lot, and I'll, well, I'll, we'll be doing a top ten favorite designers eventually. Do you think there is? Really less spoilers from the Avengers movie than many recent movies like Star Wars movies. For now, I'm sure the spoilers are everywhere. I really, so we went watch it Thursday and I didn't even look at Facebook or anything on the internet that day. I was just too worried about seeing spoilers. Um, and then when we saw it, then I was, I saw it with my three oldest kids and the Dice Tower guys. We all went and saw it together. And then I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then took my wife to see it so I could talk about it at home. And my little kids don't care about spoilers. We'll watch it together. Uh, when it comes out on video and stuff, but uh, and then I, whenever I meet someone like in a geeky way, I'm like, "Have you seen Infinity War? You haven't? All right, you know." But if uh, if they have, I'm like, oh, "Okay, let's talk about blah 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 blah." You know, <laughs> the Iron Druid Chronicles. I have not read them at all. In one of your videos, you mentioned you started Melody very early on board games. How did you introduce them to her? And how do you do you have any suggestions about Melody? I think she should keep playing games. I'm so proud of her. Uh, I started her on board games when she was two, and we played like a uh, a little card game. And her at two, my son at four, would not have been able to handle what she was able to handle at two. Every kid is different. I wasn't teaching Melody Puerto Rico at five. I, I, I think it's really weird nowadays that we kind of have this, uh, like, hmm, my kid is playing this game at age seven and eight. You know, they're playing, you know, history of the world. Well, yay. I mean, I don't think it's a competition. And, and, I, and I really strive to push this at home, right, that just because Melody likes games and plays games, I don't like her better than the other kids. And so I really push that. And I, I play games with my other kids, but I don't try to get them into games, I guess. And maybe I did push Melody a little more than I would have pushed the others because she was my only kid for a while. But uh, she also kind of gravitates towards it. So any of the kids can come with me to game days or play games. And sometimes a couple of the other ones ask, but it's mostly just Melody. Um, I will say, though, that in Kemet, so we're playing Kemet, and the game is going a little longer than I wanted to. The, the two new guys that we taught Kemet, they were they were... They, they grasped the rules, but they got caught up in just fighting each other. <laughs> they just kept attacking each other over and over and over again at detriment to themselves. Me and Melody are actually trying to win the game. So I have eight victory points, which is what you need to win. And I said, all right. 
And the guy said, is the game over? I said, no, because if someone can take a point away from me, then the game will be over. Melody had six points, so she attacks me. And I'm like, oh, man, Melody, why are you doing this here? Now we're going to have to play another whole round of this. I was kind of hoping the game would be over so we could go to eat because I was hungry. And she attacks me, and I'm like, all right, I'll stop this, 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 and this. And then she wins the attack, which I did not expect. I thought she'd take a point away, but she wins the attack and gets two points, which I hadn't thought of. And then she ends up winning the game. And then she just looked at me and smiled. And I didn't know whether I should be proud or annoyed. or <laughs> It was a good game. Good game. Any upcoming Dice Tower videos with Jason Levine? Well, if you've missed it, he's been doing his blog of the Gathering of Friends all last week, and that will continue all this week. Will you unbox some D&D stuff? Uh, I don't see any around here, so probably not. Um, do you think it's normal for someone... In, oh, how, Best way to start a gaming group if your friends don't play? Try Meetup. That might work. That's what I would try first. Facebook. Do you think it's normal for someone new to the hobby to take a long time to find a regular group to, to play with? It's been about eight months. I'm not sure if it's just me as a person. Well, I mean, it depends where you are. I would ask on Board Game Geek and go to Facebook and meet up and look for a group. There's probably an open group somewhere near you, but I mean, there are some places where there's not many groups near, but you can find a meetup. Like if you were in the Miami area, there's definitely a meetup group here that you can come and play games with. So that's what I would, I would do. When they let the Wookiee win, are they playing a board game or a computer game? Oh, it's a board game. It's definitely on a computer screen with computer figures, but it's a board game. Which of your kids is the strongest reflection of you? Um, and what about the strongest reflection of your wife? I'm not sure which one's the strongest reflection of my wife. But for me, it's definitely a split between my two oldest kids. Um, Amy has my very dry sense of humor at times. And... Uh, Melody has my, the, my liking of geeky pursuits. Although Amy likes geeky pursuits in some ways too. Like they're both big fans of superheroes. Amy unfortunately likes the DC universe. And Melody unfortunately thinks Iron Man was in the right in the Civil War, which as we all know is not correct. Um, but, ooh, people are giving me all kinds of stuff here. Zaria Fierce. All right. Well, thank you for all these things. I'm not saying I'm going to follow them through, but I will look at them and try to pick a good book. Did International Tabletop Day seem a bit muted this year? Does it need a shot in the arm? How important is it to the hobby compared to conventions, online content, etc.? Um, I don't... Yeah, I did feel a little muted, I guess. Um, I think without Will Wheaton as a front person, it loses a little bit of its you know, star power to some degree, although he hasn't been the front person for a while. But man, I, you know, we have two stores in the Miami area. One's in Kendall and one is up in uh, Hollywood. And we, uh, we were a little concerned because we were running an event at both stores at the same time. And usually, you know, there's people who, it, it, they're an hour, well, they're about 40 minutes from each other. And so, you know, people won't go to one who go to the other, but there's a lot of people who live in between them who will go to whichever one's open. And so we are worried about that, but both of them were packed full. So Tabletop Day definitely brings out people in many stores. It, it works. So uh, I don't know if it needs a shot in the arm. I think it's doing better. How important is it to the hobby? I don't know. I, I wouldn't hesitate to, to guess on that. I don't think it's like important to the hobby, but at the same time, I don't think it's not important either, if that makes sense. I mean, the Civil War movie was bad, but in the comics, pro-registration was the right side. What? In the comics? No. In the comics, the... In the movie, you could argue both points of view. In the comics, while pro-registration makes more sense from a logical standpoint, they definitely made Iron Man to be the bad guy. I mean, he was bringing villains in. They shot at Captain America before the registration effect registration uh, thing went into effect. But I mean, it was the villain's number one thing. And Iron Man was doing so many undershaded things, throwing all his friends in jail, putting them in the, in the negative zone, bringing the robotic Thorin, which killed Goliath. I mean, he, he made so many bad choices in that. They were definitely, it was biased writing, but I didn't care because I like Captain America better anyway. So I was fine by that. 
And Captain America at some point says, all right, we need to stop fighting. What we're doing here is wrong, and he's going to stop resisting. But that whole, you know, for the next year, the what they call that then, uh, the New Order, I forget what it was called, where Iron Man basically is running America. He was a villain there, in my opinion. And how do we know that? Because when he was replaced by Norman Osborn, um, it it showed that the he was Iron Man was a good character, but that uh, you put an evil character in what he had, and the whole thing got worse. That was Dark Reign. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, no, the comics pro registration was not the right side. Oh, okay. Villains came only because Captain America wouldn't obey the laws and kept fighting back. Yeah, no, 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 no. In this instance, it was a bad law. And also, Captain America was attacked because he was ordered to go arrest friends for simply not registering. So, no. The Illuminati shot Hulk into space. Yeah, well, I'm not a fan of the Illuminati either. All right, so some of you who are not comic book fans are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Um, are you attending every day at the UK Games Expo? I am. How many questions am I behind here? Oh, I'm not too far behind at all. How can I get a prototype of my game previewed by you, Sam or Z, by doing a paid preview? Well, if you notice, we don't do paid previews. Mark Street does them on our channel. So if you email me, I can put you in contact with him, but we don't do those. Is Dice Tower Con growing again this year? Yeah, it's going up by, I think, 300 people or, or so. Are you collaborating with Colossal Games on a project in particular? Not any project in particular. Colossal Games is visiting us this Friday, and so we're going to be playing a couple of their games live to show them off. Um, and then I'm going to be at their booth and just playing games and meeting people there. But there's no project in particular. I'm just going to have a lot of fun. Did I watch the greatest Royal Rumble or WrestleMania? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't because they cost money and I'm not paying money for that right now. Uh, you can always subscribe. You know, I don't have TV, so I have subscriptions. So I have Hulu, Amazon. I mean, Amazon's, a, Amazon's not really a cost because I'm going to be Amazon Prime no matter what. So, so that's kind of like free. But Amazon, Hulu, and um, Netflix. Although I have subscribed to a channel on Amazon.prime, so I guess I should include it. And the HBO Now. And that's enough. That's like enough, enough, enough. When a Disney one comes out, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I, I might have to drop one. But I, I'm not going to pay for WWE stuff. Why all the hate for DC? I love Green Lantern. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't hate DC. It's just clearly Marvel's better. Um, I like the DC comics. They're fine. But uh, I've always liked the Marvel stuff much, much more. Granted, the comics are a mess, right, uh, whenever I read them, and I'm pretty good, I've read a lot of Marvel comics, I mean a lot, uh, and I pretty much know what's going on at a given point, and I'll still read them and go, what, who, what, huh, I thought this character was dead, you know, they can be very confusing. Um, now, when it comes to the cinematic universe, it is not even close, like, not even close. If I was running the DC studio, I'd make them all watch Infinity War, and they would watch it, and then I said, okay, now you got to watch it again. You have to watch this ten times, guys. Now, when you're done, now we're going to go watch Iron Man. And here's what we're going to learn, DC Universe writers, is that if you want to earn Infinity War, then you need to build to it. You don't start with Doomsday and Batman vs. Superman and all that nonsense. You don't start with those. You get to those. And DC is like, oh, let's do another big event here. Let's throw Lex Luthor and Dark Side. I mean, uh, not Dark Side. Um... Doomsday in the same movie and blah, 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 blah. And they just, they can't pull off the epic feeling because they haven't earned it yet. DC TV shows are what my daughter likes, actually, though. I find them okay. I find it hokey. And I like to come in and sit there and just be dumb. I'll be like, so is Flash evil here? Hey, that guy was evil in the last episode. And my kids are like, well, that's a Tyne alternate clone, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I, I completely understand it, actually. But I just think it's funny how... TV shows irritate me a lot um, because of the nature of a TV show. I'll watch a lot of TV shows, 
But I always get irritated by the fact that someone who does some fairly villainous things can flip to be a good guy because a, a more villainous person shows up. And then a good guy will flip to being a villain because of whatever reason. And then they switch back and forth. And sometimes at the end of a show, Scandal's a good episode, uh, reason for this. You're like, who was bad? Who was good? I'm not even sure anymore. And you, you're, you're like working with that guy and having a good time. But didn't they like shoot your brother like 10 episodes ago? And TV shows do that a lot. Um, so, I don't know. I'm getting off topic here. Board games. Let's answer a question about board games. Did I ever get the deluxe giant version of River Dragons? I did. I gave it to Dice Tower Con. I'm going to an outdoor event gathering with a lot of men in Michigan next month. What outdoor game or games would you recommend? Eh, get what you want. But remember... The uh, the wind, the wind is the is a factor. Okay, so anything with cards is probably not a good idea. If there's any wind at all, I've learned this the hard way for sure. Um. Okay. Do you read paperbacks, e-reader, or both? Well, I used to read um, comics themselves straight up. Then I read uh, the trade, the, you know, the, 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 big, the, the big trade backs. Now I read everything online. I, I use Marvel Unlimited, and for the life of me, I can't figure out why DC does not do it. I read some reasoning that they have fewer comics, so it doesn't work as well for them. But Marvel Unlimited is great. I am six months behind, but who cares? There's so much to read. I'll be like, hmm, like the other day, like last week, I read The Infinity Gauntlet. Just because I could. I went back and reread it because I want to, you know, prepare for Infinity War. And then I read Infinity War and I started reading Infinity Crusade, but Infinity Crusade is, um, <clears throat> none of the three comics are actually that good. The 90s had a lot of problems with comics in general. But, um, and one of the problems with these big crossover events, you'll go to them and you'll be like, what? This one character seems out of place. Like, and for example, in Infinity Gauntlet, is it Infinity Gauntlet or is it, I think it's Infinity Gauntlet. Thor is a different character than Thor normally is. It's not the same guy. It's someone else. And so he's like, I hope people don't find out that I'm not the original Thor. It's like, okay, fine. But leave, leave that subplot in Thor, please. How do I meet you at UK Games Expo? We'll have a booth there, and we'll post a schedule of when we'll be at the booth. So that would be a good chance for you to meet us there for sure. Or come to one of our shows. Um, your description say your kids join you. I've just started watching. Are Z and Sam, does, that, does it say that on my of the description of this particular video? If it does, I apologize. Tom um, answers your. Doesn't say anything about my kids. I'm confused about that. All right. Well, sorry. If you got confused, I apologize. How do you get a game reviewed by you? Well, it's just got to show up. And even then, it doesn't promise to get reviewed. So um, over here to the side of me, games come in. You'll see um, I'll do a, the, a boring unboxing, so you'll see the games that way. Then they sit there and shrink, and I put a sticker on all of them so I know what month they came in. Uh, like there's red stickers. That's March or earlier. There are, no, no, that's February or earlier. Then there are green stickers, which is March. Yellow stickers are April. Blue stickers will be May. And when we get to the end of May, red stickers are going to be June. But I'm going to take all the red stickers out of there and open them all up and move them over to the other room. In the other room, we got a ton of room. And people just, we just all go in, me, Sam, and Z. And we're like, mm, I feel like trying this one out. That's our criteria. We'll then play the games and, and review them. But sometimes they don't get reviewed. If they don't get reviewed, I'll ping my other reviewers. There's reviewers on our channel, lots of them. I'll say, hey, do you, want, do you guys want to review these? And if no one wants to review them, then that's it. They're gone. Um, if they want to review them, then they go their different ways. That's how it works. So games will fall through those cracks for sure. Nothing I can do about that. There's a lot of games out there. Why do you think Fireball Island is so polarizing? Despite a ridiculous successful campaign, the comments in every video were very mean and hateful. Meh. 
I don't know that it's polarizing. It just whenever anything's popular, people are going to say, why is it popular and say that it's not. And I think people are looking for something in Fireball Island and it's not. They took a kid's game from my childhood and made it a kid's game for now. Sure, adults can play it and have a lot of fun with it. It is a lot of fun. I'm, I don't know why, for me, rolling marbles down chutes and knocking other people down is hilariously fun. It's not a super complex game, but I don't think it was ever meant to be one. And so I think that might be the backlash because people went in looking for something that's not there. It is literally the game that we wanted from our childhood, which was a fun idea, but was not really that good of a game. Now it is that good of a game. So if it's polarizing, it is what it is. Thoughts on the upcoming expansion for Caverna? I know nothing about it. Where is the UK Games Expo? It's in Birmingham, and it is the very beginning of June. Um, how can I get the entire Dice Tower team's autograph on a poster or a game? Coming to a convention is really the only way to do that. We've had people ask us to do it, you know, can we send you this and stuff, but it's just, it's a lot of work for us to get that and package it off, and again, I, I want people to realize, you know, when, when we do stuff like that, we are taking away from our content time. We always want to be putting out content for you guys and stuff. And so uh, we try to have content out every day for you. It is possible that Sam could be Tom's kid if Tom uses Chief Sokoto's temporal shift ray, but that one-way trip is something he's not shown interest in. Well, first of all, no, that's not how that works. Um, Sam is not my kid. Uh, Sam is uh, a few years older than me. Um, and Chief Sokoto does not have a temporal shift ray. Um, what we use is a dynamic weak walk. Um, and it's really hard to explain. And I, it might be patent pending. I'm not sure. Eh, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah. So, I mean, it, we, we can get around pretty easily. There, there's some rules. And time travel always has this wibbly wobbly stuff going on with it and, uh, and stuff. And... And thank you, writers, for stealing that for the Doctor Who. But that's really how it works, you know. Um, but me and Chief Sokotoa seem to have no problems with it. So when I talk about it, I'm really not going to get into specifics on exactly how the thing works. But just realize that it does. What kind of computer do you use when you're working? I use a MacBook Pro. When you say they're gone, no, they go to Dice Tower Con and we get rid of them there. The board games. I'm, I apologize, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping a lot of questions about the Infinity War movie because I don't want to spoil anything for it, so I'm not going to say I like this character, that character, whatever. I don't want to spoil anything, so uh, we thought about doing a spoiler review for the three of us, but it's a board game channel, so I'm not really sure there's a lot of uh, people who want to do that. Lifeboats, yeah, that's a great old game, so once they found it and played it. Let's see... For outdoor games, I mean more of dexterity games like Bag Toss or things like that. There's a lot of fun outdoor games uh, that people play. Um, Beanbag Toss certainly is one I like. Horseshoes, obviously. Uh, lawn darts. Um, ring Toss. I haven't played many of those games in a long time. I played Beanbags the other day. Why did I play Beanbags? I was somewhere. Oh, was that an arcade? They had a beanbag game there, and I was like, oh, that's fun. Like, um, I was better at the beanbag game than I was at um, uh, the bowling one, which name had just gone through my mind. Oh, but anyway, yeah. Um, have you played Explorers of the North Sea? I have. What were your thoughts? I thought it was fine. I might do a full review of it at some point. It was good. It was like a... It was like a six or seven for me. Um, it was a fine game, not nearly as good as Raiders of the North Sea. Do you like watching movies in 2D or 3D? 2D for sure. I think I'm done with 3D. Um, it just feels like too much work for me. I feel like the colors of the movie are muted. I feel like I'm constantly having to move my head. I just don't enjoy it as much as 2D at all. What's the comic book scene like in Korea? 
it's mostly anime stuff, like Japanese stuff. I haven't seen much else other than that. Um, for autograph stuff, how about a stretch goal on Kickstarter? A stretch goal? No, 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 no. Stretch goals are a bad idea, just remember. It might be a, a, a pledge level, but not a stretch goal. Stretch goal just means we get to a certain point and suddenly we start doing something. I'm not sure I, I want to do that way. If you had to choose a country in Europe to live in, which would you choose? I haven't been to enough of them to really know. I've only been to Germany and, and Great Britain. I don't believe I've been to any other countries, have I? I mean, I've flown through Paris. Yeah, that's it. I haven't been to many. I'm going to Poland this year, but, you know, I, I don't know enough about all the things about living in any of these countries. Ski ball. Yes. Why, why did that, why did that, like, go through my brain? But, yeah, ski ball. My mom used to love ski ball. I thought it was pretty good. Um, 3D is a gimmick. Yeah, that's true. 3D is a gimmick, but a lot of people like it. You know, Sam likes 3D a lot, but I just don't like it at all. And, you know, nothing against people who do. It's fine if you enjoy it. It just doesn't work for me, so I always pick the 2D movie. Besides, it's cheaper, too. That helps. Um, Ladder Toss, my favorite outdoor game. They're making a, um... Smaller board game version of Ladder Toss. I think it's on uh, Kickstarter. You play any TTR R TTRPGs? What's a TTRPG? I don't know what that is, actually. Is that tabletop RPG? Is that what that means? Like one that you play on a table? And if so, no, I don't. I mean, we played one last Friday. We played one with Justin. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, kind of. <laughs> you don't have to watch it to see what I mean. Um... Oh, that is what you mean. And I played Pathfinder before, and I played Star Wars, and I played Heroes Unlimited, but I don't play any currently. I don't have time really with playing at board games. Um. Oh, you meant pledge level we're at on? Yeah, no, that, that I understand that for sure. Um. On Board Game Breakfast Ant Lab, talked about personality types. Most gamers in their research were INTJ. What's your MBTI? You know, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I know it's E. And I'm pretty sure the last letter is J. Um, but, I don't, but I don't remember what the other two letters are. But I know it's E. It's not even close when it comes to that. I need to write it down the next time. I, every once in a while, I'll go take the Meyer Briggs test and I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, I remember this now. And then I can't remember. Um, I know I'm the extrovert, but I don't really remember the rest parts of it. Is Rise of the Empire an essential expansion for Star Wars Rebellion? I don't think it's essential because I haven't played it and I still like Star Wars Rebellion, but it's probably very good. Sam says so. You should do a review about why the comic Infinity Wars was way better than the movies. Well, actually, I probably wouldn't do that because I actually believe this. I think the movies are better than the comics. And I know that's kind of mind-blowing, right? Most people aren't going to agree with me. You know, the movie's never as good as the book. But the fact is, is the comics never, ever did a good job. They always had plot holes. They've always never, the writers never really communicated with each other well. They didn't build up to things. And the MCU is amazing, amazing at things from older movies that they bring back later on. The plot developments, for the most part, when people die, they stay dead. I don't sit there and go, I wonder how they're going to bring that person back or whatever in, in different movies. Um, again, not getting into anything about the current movie. I'm talking about the older movies and such. And just, you know, uh, I, I felt like the character development was really good. There's obviously the economy of characters. They made changes. There's some changes I, I would not have done, maybe. But for the most part... I think they've done a phenomenal job. Which of these is the best gateway game? Yamatai, Photosynthesis, or Mysterium? Probably Photosynthesis. Best game overall? Photosynthesis. Are there plans for an expansion for Viral? I don't believe so. Here's a live play idea. The Hamtag Crew versus you, Sam, and Z in a war game. Any chance? I would say the chance of that are zero for a couple reasons. One, the Hamtag Crew, they live like in Texas. We live all the way, or Oklahoma, or wherever they live out in the West. 
We live down here in the tip of Florida, so the chance of us crossing paths. Secondly, the chance of us finding a game that all, all six was like seems pretty slim. I always say that pretty much anybody I would have crossover with. I'm not sure that the, the, two game, you know, the two guys that the Chief does it with are very heavy wargamers, and Z is not a wargamer at all, so I don't really see that that would work. <laughs> I think that would be the main problem. Any ever played a Connect Four basketball crossover? I have played that. When did I play that? I remember when I was a kid in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There was a, this basketball golf course, like where you would there would be like all these different rims and, and weird things, and you would have to shoot the basketball and bounce it off different things to get it through the net. I always thought that was really cool, and I I saw it as a kid. I never did it, but that would be something fun. Have you played or are you aware of the differences being made to Nothing Personal? Oh, I'm very aware of the differences being made to them. I have not played them, though. The differences and all the changes in Nothing Personal have been made by the folks who are running the project that's currently on Kickstarter. When are you coming to Poland? In September, there's a camp being run by Geek and Sun Camp, uh, or Geek and Sun, and I'll be coming to that. Um... Do you find it difficult to keep track of which news you can and can't share? So when you learn things, um, not really. I mean, sometimes I have to think, am I allowed to talk about this or not? But whenever I talk to somebody, I say, am I allowed to talk about it? And if they say, no, you can't talk about this, I kind of just put it in my mind in some back burner somewhere. I just can't talk about it. You know, if they say I can talk about it, then I start talking about it right away, usually. Because why not? Give me a PS4. Oh, I, I don't... I don't have one. I'm sorry. What is the next top 10 you're hosting? Top 10 dexterity or action games. What's the biggest board game release of 2017 that you didn't personally review? Uh, probably Wasteland Express, probably. I think there might be a bigger one, too. There's a couple that I didn't review. Is there a live show at Origins this year? Yes, there is. Hamtag guys live in Kansas. You're right. But it's still very far from where we are at here. Um, do you think the Marvel Cinematic Universe could introduce the champions in its entirety? Maybe. I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing in the future, like what characters they're going to be bringing in. I mean, we know what they've announced. We know there's an Ant-Man Wasp movie. We know there's a Captain Marvel movie. I don't know that they've announced too much beyond that. They've announced sequels to some of their movies, but I don't know what other new people they've announced. And from what I heard, they're not going to San Diego Comic-Con this time. They're not going to be like making a big deal where you have to wait till after the next movie and find out. And then we'll see. Who knows? Have you checked out Blood and Plunder from Firelock Games in Miami? No, I don't know anything about that. I apologize. Nice hat. Oh, thank you. This is my pork pie hat. All right. Let's see. Will we have our own booth at PAX this year? We're probably going to be sharing with somebody, so we'll do that. Hey, looks like I caught up on questions. What is that all about? I don't normally catch up on questions. Oh, there's some. Favorite Tarantino movie? I don't really like his stuff. Sorry. Is PAX Unplugged worth the trip, even though it's a weekend convention? I think so. I thought it was a lot of fun. I would go for sure. PAX Unplugged was really, really fun. Come on, give me some more questions. It's only 10.59. We don't end early here. We end on time. You have to listen to the uh, Hawaii Five O theme until I get a question. <laughs> Does Z like doing the live Q and A's? Oh, I, I think so. He's done them before. Live Q and A's are pretty easy to do. So yeah, I guess that'd be a better question for Z. <laughs> Do you ever bring in fans to play in your live playthroughs? No, and probably I won't. And I'll tell you why um, 
and I gotta say this properly so I don't mess mess up what I mean by this is we 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 used to actually do where fans could come onto the show and do top tens with us on our audio show. We stopped doing this because it kind of we want our content to be good. And when we bring a fan in, we don't know first of all, we don't know that person very well usually, right? So we don't necessarily mesh with them. Like me, Sam, and Z, we joke with each other. We say really mean things about each other. That if we didn't know each other, you'd think, well, what, do these guys like each other? Well, we do. But we're, we're pretty mean back and forth. But uh, if, if you bring in someone who doesn't really know the group or they're just a visitor, that can be awkward. And they might also not be good on camera, which then makes for bad content. And when we've had guests on in the past, and again, I'm not, I, I'm trying to say this, I'm not trying to say this in a way like, Pfft. These guys in the past have been horrible. We've never had someone who's horrible, but we've had complaints saying it just wasn't as good as your normal top tens. And I feel bad about that because I liked having the people on and stuff, but it just, you know, it's just hard to, you don't know that person very well. All right. Well, that's that. We are boring and awkward. I didn't say that. All right. I would like to visit lots of places all over the, all over the country, but... I appreciate this. Now, realize that we are currently streaming this on YouTube and Twitch. Um, I'm probably going to, in the future, be streaming on one or the other as time goes by, as we start doing more streaming. And because we're finding that streaming simultaneously is really messing with our speed. And it, Twitch is the one that tends to suffer. So our Twitch audience is still pretty small. Also, Twitch kind of wants exclusivity. So what we might do is we might stream some stuff on Twitch and then post it on YouTube later on. So you'll never miss that. And we might do some stuff just on YouTube. We'll see. But, oh, I don't mean to end with a yawn, but that's how this one is ending. So until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and um, you've been watching live Q&A on April 30th. April showers bring May flowers. What do May flowers bring? Pilgrims. That's a really bad joke. Hmm. That brings to mind, like, um, let's see, huh, I should practice probably for other ones. What's a derivative of Amazon? Oh, it's Amazon Prime. Why does Piglet smell? Because he plays with poo. Why don't oysters give to charity? Because they're shellfish. What's the difference between three and two? One. What does a clock do when it's hungry? It goes back four seconds. What type of music do mummies listen to? Rap music. Hmm. What? Why didn't the melons get married? Because they can't elope. Hmm. How do you make a clown cry? You kill his family. <laughs> that was funny. Um. What kind of car does an egg drive? A Yolks wagon. The past, the present, and the future walked into a bar. It was tense. What do sprinters eat before a race? Nothing. They fast. Why did the picture go to jail? Because it was framed. What do you call a snobbish prisoner going down the stairs? A con descending, con descending. What do you call an empty jar of cheese whiz? Cheese was. A man opens the door and finds a snail on his front porch. He picks it up and throws it across the street. A year later, the man opens the door and finds the same snail on his front porch. The snail looks up and says, what was that all about?
what's large, gray, and doesn't matter, and irrelevant. What did the finger say to the thumb? I'm in glove with you. What did one hat say to the other? You stay here, I'll go on ahead. How do you feel when there's no coffee? Depresso. What's brown and sticky? A stick. Two satellites decided to get married. The wedding wasn't much, but the reception was incredible. clouds wear under their shorts? Thunder pants. What did Batman say to Robin before they got in the car? Get in the car. <laughs> um... Who's bigger, Mr. Bigger or Mr. Bigger's baby? The baby, because she's a little bigger. What did the astronaut's fiance say when he proposed in space? I can't breathe. Why do vampires believe everything you tell them? Because they're suckers. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot. Did you hear about the Italian chef who died? He pasta away. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies? Why do ghosts love elevators? Because they lift their spirits. What do you do when you see a spaceman? Park in it, man. What do you call someone who gets mad when they don't have any bread? Lactose intolerant. 